so happy to be here today with Christine Lee, um, who's going to talk about cannabis and autoimmune conditions. So thank you so much for joining us. You know, uh, Christine, this is something that we've been talking a lot about recently, even even recently on our clubhouse yeah. and Zoom groups is about, you know, using cannabis and some of the, uh, the, you know, the different types and, you know, but I can't smoke it. And, you know, those types of things come up. So we're really looking forward to your presentation and your experience as you talk yeah. about using cannabis as medication today. So yeah. it's a very timely topic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to share. So excited. Great. Everyone needs to know. Yes, yes. And there's a, there's a lot that, uh, you know, we can take in and knowledge. And then, you know, there's some of the other things we're all going to have to do our own research. Um, oh, because, yeah. because of our, you know, different locations, and depending on which states you're in. But uh, Christine is going to break all of that down for us today. Yeah. So very yeah, happy. Absolutely. So welcome. For those of you that don't know Christine, uh, Christine uh, was diagnosed with myositis in 2013. And uh, so I have known her um, since around that time, and it's been a long time since we've connected. So this is a, a wonderful opportunity to, to bring in one of our own, right? She's uh, also living with myositis, but she also in 2018 was diagnosed with a very aggressive uh, cancer. Um, and she's going to share her experiences today um, about using cannabis and how cannabis got her through some of that difficult time and um, much, much more. So um, I'm going to let Christine kind of introduce herself because you have a lot of um, letters behind your name and a lot of uh, <laughs> education, um, and we yeah. appreciate you sharing it with us today. So welcome, Christine. Thank you. I I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay, let's do this. And welcome to anybody that's just joined us. Um, happy to have you here with us uh, today with Christine Lee. Uh, who is going to talk to us about cannabis uh, as medicine and cannabis and autoimmune conditions. So here we go. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. I feel like I'm amongst friends because we all share something, um, either living with myositis or, or taking care of someone with myositis. So, you know, I'm just really excited to be here and to be able to share this information um, with you guys and people that I care about and people that I can identify with. Um, so my name is Christine Lee. I've been a registered nurse for over 24 years. Um, primarily, I've worked in the arenas of hospice and pain management. Um, but today we're going to be talking about cannabis and autoimmune conditions. So I speak to you today, you know, not, not just as a nurse, but as a patient as well. Um, and, and I hope that you can find some really good benefit from this. Um, my goals for today, my goals for us today, we're gonna review the, um, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a brief overview of my background. We'll talk about the basics of the endocannabinoid system, the basics of cannabis as medicine. We'll touch on the, the benefits and the risks, the role cannabis medicine plays in autoimmune disorders, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about recommended next steps. And before you move on, Christine, sure. um, maybe I should, uh, I think I skipped a part. Uh, if you have questions along the way, please click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. It might be at the top, depending on what device you're using, um, but find the Q&A button and you can enter your questions there anytime. Um, and then uh, Christine will, uh, will work on uh, getting answers to those after the presentation. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. All right. So... I wanna share my story with you. Um, I know Jerry touched on it, but there's so much more to say. Um, my health problems started in 2013. I was having difficulty um, getting from a, a laying position to a sitting position when I would squat down at the grocery store to look at you know, some food at the bottom shelf. I couldn't get up. Um, I thought maybe I was turning 40 and I needed to go to the gym. So that's honestly really what I thought. I was also super fatigued, but I just thought I was lazy. Um, but then I started having trouble swallowing. And that's when I knew that something wasn't 
were quite right. So, you know, I, I went to my physician, they did a whole bunch of blood tests. Next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call in the middle of the night saying that I need to go to the hospital immediately because my CK levels were through the roof beyond measurable. So I um, was actually lucky enough um, to have a really good team of physicians uh, during that hospitalization. I had the muscle biopsy and whatnot. And so I was diagnosed with polymyositis immediately. Um, so that, you know, truly was a blessing. Um, I know that a lot of people don't, you know, don't have that um, and that it takes years to, to get the proper diagnosis. But I was one of the lucky ones that got uh, diagnosed immediately. Um, from the polymyositis, I did all of the, you know, the, the regular treatments that we talk about all the time, um, steroids, I did methotrexate injections, oral, more steroids, um, rituxan infusions, Remicade infusions, all of that, I did all of that, I did IVIG, um, you know, the, the effectiveness of them were up and down, I, you know, was allergic to some, um, the latest treatment that I was on was the Enbrel, uh, Enbrel injections and steroids. But, you know, as you know, with these types of medications and also just in having an autoimmune disease, um, we're more at risk um, for getting cancers. And so I was one of those um, who did eventually get a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I, there was a tumor in my breast, which, you know, after biopsy, to my surprise, um, it actually was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, it was in my breast and it was also in my bone marrow. So that's what made it a stage four. Um, you know, once, once I was diagnosed with that, um, you know, your focus just kind of totally changes. Um, you know, I, I put myself on a treat, you know, my own little treatment plan, um, which was based on having a positive attitude, staying focused, um, and, and really, you know, doing a lot of research and, and doing what I needed to do to get better and to survive. Um, as you can see from the pictures, you know, I am a, I'm a single parent. I have a daughter. Um, there was no, you know, I had to just <clears throat> do what I could to fight. Um, part of my, my treatment plan was taking uh, cannabis. And I am not a, you know, a previous to all of this, I was never really a, a smoking marijuana person. I, I would tell people, I don't need help being lazy. So, um, but, you know, when it came to my life and um, trying to really attack the disease from different angles, I knew that a cannabis would be a viable option. And, um, you know, because I work in hospice, I have a lot of what I call foo-foo friends who do like Reiki and energy healing and healing touch and, you know, all kinds of stuff outside of the box. So, you know, lucky for me, I knew someone who knew a cannabis nurse and um, uh, she came to my house. Um, she talked about to me about my goals and, you know, what I was trying to do. And we came up with a treatment plan together on something that would work uh, very specific to me. What I didn't want when I had cancer was to walk into a dispensary and talk to some kid behind the counter and try to get medical advice from them. Um, so it was really important to me to talk to a medical prof professional, which is exactly what I did. Um, in addition to the cannabis, obviously, I, I went forward with the medical treatments and making sure that I followed up with my oncologist. I did two rounds of chemotherapy. Um, unfortunately, those did not work for me. Um, the cannabis did help me um, get through those side effects, but in terms of being effective for the cancer, it just was not. Um, and so the doctors offered to me a, a brand new cutting edge treatment called CAR T cell therapy. And what that does is, um, by the way, I had months to live when the doctor presented this to me. So it really was a no brainer. Like I really, ha I had to do it. You know, there was no other, other option. So, um, in CAR T, they, they remove your T cells, genetically modify it to learn how to fight cancer. They multiply it and then they put it back in your body. And then it like, you know, does its things that these little soldiers, if you see in my presentation, you can see me in a bed hooked up to this machine. It looks, I felt like I was on dialysis, but basically that was a machine that took the T cells out, filtered it, and then, you know, put the rest back in me and my other arm. I had a uh, two big, huge 18 gauge uh, IVs in each arm. 
I was sitting there for probably a good seven, eight hours, but you know, you do what you need to do. Right. And look, I'm actually like smiling. <laughs> so I love, I love your positive attitude because those <laughs> eight, those eight gauge needles, that's like a pencil. So I, <laughs> they are, <I'm> <laughs> they are, um, you know, I, I mean, luckily, you know, needles don't, don't really scare me. Um, but you know, I know for a lot of other people, it's horrid. Um, but yeah, he, here's some, some pictures of my life, me and my daughter. Um, I got this hospital slumber party with the BFF down below, but anyhow, <laughs> that is what I was going through. So I have the CAR T uh, self treatment. Oh, and by the way, just before CAR T, my physician had me stop the cannabis because it was such a new treatment. They weren't really sure how it was going to react. And it's almost a million dollar treatment. So it's like, really, we, there, we really couldn't throw any extra stuff in there. It just had to be very specific. So I stopped it under the guidance of, of my oncologist. Um, however, you know, after the, the, the cells were put back into my body, um, I could honestly feel like there was a war there was a really serious war going on inside of me. Um, I had nonstop diarrhea, nonstop vomiting. Um, I lost like 50 pounds in a couple of months, um, very fatigued, but yet super restless. Like I felt like I was crawling out of my skin, which is probably the worst feeling that I could think of. Um, I needed multiple blood transfusions. I was in a walker, wheelchair, shower chair. I needed my family with me 24 hours a day because I was just so sick. Um, the good news was I could feel the tumor melting away. Um, it just like disintegrated, but I was so sick in the process. Finally, after multiple visits to the oncologist, he told me, you know what, you know, this is all of this, all of these meds that I'm giving you, they're not working. So stop the Zofran, stop the Reglin, stop the Compazine, all these medications that I'm giving you for your symptoms, stop all of them and go back on your cannabis. And so I did, I sure did. The very next day, I kid you not, super amazing. The very next day, um, the restlessness was gone. The vomiting decreased. So, you know, I was throwing up like maybe 20, 25 times a day, just like constantly. Um, and it went down to maybe five times a day. No longer needed the walker, no longer needed the wheelchair. Um, I was able to stand up in the shower I was able to eat. I was able to leave the house and go to the grocery store and not leave the house to go straight to the doctor. Um, and what it did for me is it really allowed me to, to recover and re rehabilitate. So it was that moment that I started to actually feel like I could actually get better and things were, were truly starting to look up. So, you know, be, because of, of my experience with this, I mean, I just feel like I need to share all this information with the world because it really, it really is life-changing. At least it was for me. Um, and so, you know, that's why I'm here today and I'm glad that everyone is here as well because you're giving me the opportunity to share this information. So thank you. So, ta-da, I'm back. Um, I feel like I was kind of raised from the dead, like literally. I, um, I had CAR T cell therapy in June of 2019. So by January of 2020, I was working full time as an RN again. Um, I'm currently working as a hospice director. I opened a dance studio with my oldest daughter. Um, I have a two-year-old grandson who I take care of once a week. My 11-year-old, I'm caring for her instead of her caring for me, which is super huge to me. Um, and because I'm not busy enough, I decided it would be a good idea to go back to school. Um, but, you know, the other big thing that I decided to do was I decided to, to start a, a cannabis nurse consulting business um, because of this mission, because of what I'm trying to do. So again, thank you for being here and being part of it. Um, there's me and my, my daughter and my grandson, and that's me riding a bike, pulling up. Awesome. Anyhow. Wow. So I'm doing well. <laughs> Despite the, you know, and I have poly my, oh, I wanted to say, since I had the, the treatments with all the chemo, the chemo that I had, had, um, I was doing Rituxan pretty, pretty frequently, but 
since the cancer treatments, I have not needed to take any medications for the, the polymyositis. I do have some pain from time to time if I do something strenuous um, or if I just have bad days, but I'm not, I'm not having to take things on, on a regular basis, which you know I'm not really sure how or why. I'm just grateful for it at this point. So that's, that's my story, that's why I'm here. So let's talk a little bit, let, let's get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of the cannabis and its use as medicine. And of course, no good cannabis webinar is without its disclaimer. So here it is right here. The information I'm presenting have not been evaluated by the FDA. It's intended to be informational and the presenter, AKA me, highly recommends that anyone interested in using cannabis um, as a tool for your health needs, please, please talk about it with your physician, um, which I did when and I had to use it. And your host at MSU would also like to be included in that, highly recommends <laughs> that anyone interested in utilizing cannabis <laughs> as a tool for their health needs, Discuss it with their physicians, please, please, please. Yeah, please, please, por favor. Okay. Um, okay, so let's dive into the amazing endocannabinoid system. A lot of people don't know that inside our bodies, we actually have something called an endocannabinoid system. Um, because marijuana is a scheduled one, it's a schedule one drug in the United States, um, research on human subjects are restricted. Um, however, a lot of cannabis research has been done outside the, of the United States, primarily in Israel. In the late 1990s, researchers in Jerusalem, including American researchers, discovered what we know today as the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is comprised of cannabis uh, receptors. These are located all throughout your body. Um, endocannabinoids are naturally occurring neurotransmitters that act like messengers uh, to the receptors. Um, and so it's, it's a communication system. And, and the goal of the endocannabinoid system is to maintain homeostasis, what we say in the medical field. Um, the other word for that is balance. So the goal of the endocannabinoid system is to maintain balance within the body. It can recognize when things are not in balance and send messages to other parts of your body to get that balance back in order. So for example, like if someone is having a seizure, that is, um, you know, a lot of misfiring of the neurons and everything in your brain. So the endocannabinoid system will, you know, pick that up and say you take, um, you know, the, and, and the natural, um, the, the natural cannabinoids you have in your body will, you know, tell the, your brain like, hey, this is too much. We need to slow this down. We need to stop this. Um, and the theory is that when there is a deficiency of endocannabinoids in your body, that's when you become susceptible to disease. And that's when imbalance occurs. When one consumes cannabis in the body, it acts um, just like the endocannabinoid, uh, the neurotrans or natural neurotransmitters. So when you consume the cannabis, it provides restoration of the balance, restoration of the neurotransmitters that you know are, are lacking in our body. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so, you know, the endocannabinoid system regulates a lot of major body functions such as sleep, appetite, and most importantly for us autoimmune people, it regulates inflammation. How do autoimmune conditions and the endocannabinoid system relate to each other? Um, so as you know, if someone has an autoimmune disease, your immune system is basically attacking your own tissues. And depending on what type of autoimmune disease, you know, varies to what type of tissues, the imbalance obviously can cause severe inflammation, pain, weakness, fatigue, and other symptoms um, based on what type of um, condition that you have. As I stated before, disease is thought to be an imbalance of the endocannabinoid system, but consuming cannabis helps to restore this imbalance. Cannabis is also a strong anti-inflammatory. So 
you know, there's hope for us. There's hope for these symptoms, the inflammation, the pain, the weakness, the fatigue. There are things that we can do that are natural things um, that, that can help with, with this imbalance. Um, like I said, it's something that it's considered to be natural. Um, you know, there's other pain medications like Vicodin and Percocet and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, I know when I take those medications, I, I just, I get like a yucky feeling inside, you know, it may, may or may not help with the pain, but I just feel, you know, yucky. I don't know there's, I can't really explain it. Um, there definitely is a place. I don't want to say that there's not a place for those types of medications because there definitely is. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's not always um, going to be the best choice at this point. And um, doctors nowadays don't really like to prescribe it the way they used to. Um, back when I first started as a hospice nurse, we would say pain is whatever the patient says it is. And now in, in today's world and, in, um, you know, with all of these overdoses going on, that's, that's not the case. So, um, you know, physicians aren't really prescribing it uh, the way that they used to. It's really hard to get really good pain relief nowadays. And, and that's why I think that introducing cannabis into your, you know, treatment plan is, is a viable option cannabis as medicine. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the specific use of, of cannabis as medicine. There are various forms of administration, of various forms to take it. It's not just about smoking it, but I am going to touch on that here, the vaporization. Um, the onset for smoking it is minutes. Um, it lasts about two hours. The effects are mild to intense, uh, depending on the percentage of, of THC and CBD. It's great for immediate relief of symptoms. Um, the, the other form are, are edibles. Onset is 30 to 60 minutes. The effects typically last about 48 hours. It's really good for uh, long acting pain relief. So it can last up to eight hours with the, with the right dosing. And um, we'll talk about dosing in a little bit. Um, and then my, my favorite are tinctures. Um, those are taken sublingually. Um, takes about 15, 20 minutes to work, lasts two to four hours. Um, it's easy to measure. There's like a little, there's like a measuring thing in the, in the dropper. So it's easy to titrate if you're trying to play with the doses. Uh, the other thing about tinctures is that it's really great for immediate relief of, of symptoms. And other Chris, forms, you, yeah. For those that are um, maybe impacted with lung disease, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis, those types of things, uh, vaporization and smoking really wouldn't be a, a good option, would it? No, that that's one of the questions that came up. I'm going to touch on that, but I can I can speak to it um, right now. Um, <clears throat> the thing about about inhalation and smoking, if you have lung disease, like if you can guarantee that it's like straight CBD and that there's nothing in it it can possibly beneficial, be beneficial. But the thing is, it's really hard. You have to like super trust who's ever making it because if there's some kind of fungus in there or some type of bacteria, if there's going to be, you know, if people are adding like preservatives or additives or all kinds of crazy stuff, it's going to be really, really, really detrimental. So I would advise, you know, unless you really know who's making it and they're like, you know, of the doing the best of standards, you know, I, I would, I would really recommend uh, against that, honestly. Um, Thank so you. you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, the other form uh, that, that cannabis comes in is, is what's called FICO oils, fully expressed cannabis oils. Um, sometimes uh, it can be, people refer to it as Rick Simpson oil, um, but basically it's, it's also a sublingual form comes in these syringes as you see pictured here. Onset is about 15 minutes. Duration of the, um, of the, of the effects are two to four hours. It's easily um, measurable, e easily easy to titrate, um, but, but it's highly, highly, highly concentrated and usually reserved for, for those with cancer or terminal diseases. And then you have the topicals, which are your creams and your salves. Um, these, these, um, you know, people have had successes, uh, lots of success with topicals. Onset is about five to 15 minutes, uh, lasts about two to four hours. Really great for muscle and joint pain. 
um, thinking about using this for myositis and muscles, I was just thinking if I'm going to use this for my muscle pain, I need to slather it from my neck to my feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's really good rather than to depend on those to take something ingestible that can be systemic. But if you do have, you know, if there's certain areas of pain that are more, more um, stronger than others, then it could be helpful for the muscle pain. Um, very good for joint pain for those who are suffering from different types of arthritis. It can be really be really beneficial. And for those who might not understand what uh, titrate means, could you just uh, just give an example of that? Sure. Thank you. So, sorry, I'm talking nurse. Um, so titrating means that you are. Um, I don't know if playing is the right word, but you're playing with the dosage. So you're going to start, you know, maybe you're starting at five milligrams and then you need to titrate up to 10 milligrams or titrate down back to five. Um, so that's what titrate means. It's, it's the process of, um, uh, of playing with the measurements to find a dose that works for you. Okay, so there are two main cannabinoids um, that are most popular. There's the CBD cannabidoil or THC, tetrahydrocannabinoil. Um, they, they do, um, they have, there are some similarities in, in what they do, but there are also some, some definite differences. CBD is, is considered to be a non-psychoactive drug, also considered to be neuroprotective, um, good for, for conditions like MS. Um, it's good for seizures. Um, they use it a lot in children. So it's, it's, it's an anticonvulsant, antioxidant, antipsychotic, and what's big for us, again, anti-inflammatory. The other thing about CBD, it's not just for, um, it doesn't, not only does it help with symptoms, but there's also cancer fighting properties to it. For anti, it's an anti-tumor. So it actually takes cancer cells and, and breaks it up. Um, which is totally amazing. Um, with CBD, there are minimal to no side effects. On the other hand, for THC, um, and the, these effects are typically seen in doses that are too high. Um, high doses can be a psychoactive. That's something to um, to consider if someone like has an underlying, like if they have like a schizophrenic diagnosis or a diagnosis in which um, causes them to have hallucinations, um, THC would be something that you would not want to take. Um, THC is also known as a relaxant, an appetite stimulant, can make you drowsy. It's an amazing analgesic, meaning it, it's really good for pain management, can cause some euphoria. And again, in high doses, it can cause some paranoia and, and anxiety. Um, not to scare people away, but like I said, with these, with these side effects, it's, it's typically in, in high doses. Um, the, the thing that a lot of people don't really know is that there are many other cannabinoids other than THC and CBD um, in the cannabis plant. Um, my favorite right now is, is CBG. Um, it's an, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's also really good for uh, GI cancers. My brother-in-law was just diagnosed with throat cancer. Um, and I was um, doing some research on C CBG and found that it's really good um, for GI cancer. So I have him on it. The tumor in his throat, you know, he's also doing chemotherapy, but the tumor in his throat has, has shrunk significantly. Um, so we're making sure that he remains on his CBG in addition to the THC and, and the CBD that I'm recommending. But, you know, there's, there's several others and, and it would be beneficial as you're doing your own research to see which ones, you know, would, would work for you. I know a lot of people that uh, take CBN. Um, it, it causes drowsiness and it's really helpful for a lot of people for sleep. So, again, um, you know, there's a lot more out there. Um, rather other than just the CBD and the THC. Christine, and so are these uh -huh. other, are these others, um, are they available like over the counter or? or you know what? Just the I don't, thing? I believe they are. I don't really spend much time in dispensaries. When I was, when I was trying to start my business, I would walk into dispensaries and try to find someone to talk to. And 
I really didn't have good response, but you know, the, the companies that I work with, they do shipping. Um, they have websites and, um, with these companies, they, they, they are available. Um, I would imagine that some of them are available in, in some of the dispensaries, but I haven't been, in, I haven't been there to, to see quite honestly, you might have to ask for it or they, or they may not have them, um, in stock because it's not, it's not in high demand. Gotcha. Thank you. The, the, the companies that I usually work with are, they're specifically medicinal. So they're pretty in tune with all the different kinds. Um, if that makes sense. <clears throat> the other, the other component of cannabis, which is important to understand is that cannabis also contains uh, what we call terpenes. And these are compounds that are, they're found in various foods, but they're also found in, in cannabis. And they're thought to provide um, very specific health benefits, as you can see outlined um, in this slide right here. Um, when purchasing cannabis oils or tinctures, they can, you know, a lot of the companies give you a choice, like, you know, do you want to add some terpenes to this one? Which ones do you want to add? Um, or sometimes they come readily available in something that's already made, and you can look to see if, if it has the terpenes that would be beneficial um, for you. Um, and they're thought to play, you know, a really major role in influencing the, the effects of the cannabis. Um, it, it, it's something that we should be talking about a lot more because it, like I said, it, it plays a really big role in influencing the, the effects. So when, go, when um, in terms of CBD and purchasing CBD or trying to choose, um, you know, what kind is best for you, you may see some terms that are on the bottle that say full spectrum or broad spectrum or isolate um, it's important to understand what the differences are with these. So with full spectrum, it contains components of the whole plant. And with full spectrum, you get what's called an entourage effect. So when you when when all the plants, the parts of the plants are, are together, they um, you know they they work beautifully together in in um, in being effective for symptom management. Brought, um, so full spectrum has terpenes and the cannabinoids, including THC. Broad spectrum has the terpenes, cannabinoids, but the THC has been removed from that in case you know, you're in a situation where you really don't want uh, THC for whatever reason. Um, the isolate is CBD isolate is specifically 99.9% .9 CBD no THC, no terpenes. You may get, you know, the 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 good effects of the CBD, but it may not work as well as if you were going to get something that is a full spectrum. Also, in choosing and purchasing, and you know, how do you know if what you're buying is legit? Uh, an important thing to know is to ask for or to look for a certificate of analysis. So reputable growers or suppliers, that suppliers, they'll actually have third-party labs analyze their products to confirm the potency and the purity, and ensure that they're safe for consumption. Um, so you know, it, it, this one right here, you'll see it breaks down how much of the terpenes are in there. Um, it also assures, like if they, if it's, if the bottle says there's 600 milligrams of CBD, it tells you, okay, yeah, there really is 600 milligrams of CBD in here. Um, it looks for things that could be harmful. So, um, you know, it, it, they look for if there's like fungus or bacteria or things in there that shouldn't be in there. Um, that it, these, these labs look for those things. So a reputable supplier will have a certificate of analysis and you should be looking for that. You should be asking for it and reviewing it. Because one of my favorites are tinctures, I wanna talk a little bit about ratio dosing, CBD and T, uh, to THC. So, you know, you can see on, on these pictures, it'll, just, it'll say like three to one, one to one. Well, what does that mean? So with this 15 to one at top, that means it's um, it's 15 parts CBD to one part THC. CBD is always first. For autoimmune conditions, based on experience, the four to one um, has typically been uh, pretty effective for autoimmune disorders. Um, also one to ones are, are pretty good, but the 
the um, THC concentration in the one to one is is for is higher than the four to one. So if you're trying to um, lay low on the the THC, the four to one would be better. When dosing these um, tinctures as a as a starter as a beginner. Um, the recommendation is typically two to five to five milligrams twice a day, just to kind of get, get it started. Um, you want to increase by two to five milligrams uh, about every three to five days as needed. Um, typically, a, a therapeutic dose would be about five to 50 milligrams a day, give or take. And, you know, everyone is going to be different. You see, that's a, a pretty big range. If your symptoms worsen or you're having a lot of side effects, you know, decrease the dose by five to 10 milligrams and, and reassess. When, when self-dosing, um, it's important to understand that, that the side effects are controlled by the dosing and, and sometimes less is more. In, in the medical field, we say start, slow, start low and go slow. Monitoring and experimentation is going to be necessary. Um, you know, just because you try something one time, um, you know, don't give up on it. Maybe you need to stick with it for a couple of days and increase the dose after five days or so. Or maybe you do that and, you know, throw in another, another type of, of cannabinoid. Um, it, it really does take some, some trial and, and error. Um, and I would recommend not, not giving up right away and, and really working to try to find a dose that, that's going to work. Um, so what are you looking for as you're titrating or as you're taking these medications? Again, side effects. Um, CBD, you may see some dizziness, some dry mouth, fast heart rate. Um, although it's typically um, a lifter, you know, some people may experience some sedation and, and everyone is going to be different like with all medications. Um, if you're feeling these effects, drink plenty of fluids, get plenty of rest. And for THC, if there's too much, you know, you could experience some disorientation, some short-term memory loss, some sedation, high doses with um, anxiety and paranoia. Again, drink plenty of fluids, get plenty of rest. Also a trick if you feel like you may have gotten too much THC is actually to take CBD. It counteracts the effects, the side effects of THC. So that's a good uh, fun trick. I, I hear that black pepper works as well, but I've never tried it. And I don't know how much you should be <laughs> putting on. Um, but I've, anyhow, heard the, I've heard the same thing. Regarding have you heard the black pepper? Yeah. 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 I'm not going to try it. Yeah. We're not going to. No. <laughs> um, but anyhow, if you got CBD on hand, that's good. Um, however, you know, really the side effects are temporary and they wear off over time. And no one has ever died from CBD or cannabis overdose. I think that that's a pretty strong statement. And, you know, so much that I was looking it up in different places. So in a lot of um, places that I've researched, they all, they, it all says that no one has ever died from CBD or cannabis um, overdose specifically. And, and the reason for that is there are no cannabinoid receptors in the brainstem, which monitor our involuntary heart rate and our involuntary breathing. Amazing. Blown away. Yeah, it is a very powerful <laughs> statement for sure. Yeah, it's powerful. Um, yeah, and I just like double check different things just to make sure. And, and you know, that that's what it says. Um, so I'm including it. It's important to, to understand that, you know, to not freak out and just, you know, sleep it off, drink some water, get some rest. The, the effects will wear off. Um, in terms of drug, drug, uh, drug interactions, obviously you want to, you know, talk to your pharmacist or your doctor. Um, but the general guidance um, is to take the cannabis one to two hours after your other medications to space them apart. Drug interactions are uncommon at low doses. Um, it, it's possible, but you know, if you're doing if you're you're doing low doses, it, it's typically not an issue. Uh, medications that do have high potential for interactions are blood thinners, immunotherapy, cancer treatments like the kind that I had, which is probably good that the doctor had me stop it for a while. Um, sedatives and antidepressants. And um, you know, with the sedatives, I mean, it would just like make you more sleepy. Um, the antidepressants, it has to do with the, the serotonin and, you know, trying to find that balance. So it, you know, if you're, if you're doing <clears throat> CBD or, or THC, in addition to the antidepressants, it might not make the antidepressants work, work well. So general recommendations for those with autoimmune disorders, like I said, I really like tinctures. <clears throat> They're easy to dose, works quickly, 
the four to one or the one to one ratio works fairly well. Um, edibles are pretty good for long acting pain relief. Topicals can be effective for your muscle and joint pain. In addition to CBD and THC, you may want to consider looking into CBG, CBDA, or THCA. All are, are pretty strong anti-inflammatories. Terpenes to consider, mycine, myrcene, carethylene, and hemidine are also good uh, anti-inflammatories. Um, as I mentioned earlier, everyone is different, so you're really going to have to do some research and some trial and error and find what works for you. Um, you may want to consider services from a cannabis nurse. They are out there all throughout the United States. Um, if there aren't any in your area, I do know that you know most of them do have virtual types of visits. Um, I've made some really good friendships across the whole United States, and um, they're all pretty good people. They all want to help. They're all on a mission the way, you know, the way I am. So I would, you know, if you are comfortable, I, I would recommend uh, considering services from a cannabis nurse to help you guide you through it. Um, so next steps. What now? You know, what do we do now? Um, obviously, you know, what's going to be super, super important is to check the laws in your area. Um, you know, uh, there's still a lot of people fighting for, um, you know, it to be legal federally, but it's, we're not quite there yet. Um, and depending on what state you're in, there's going to be, you know, different rules and different laws. And, you know, do you need a, do you need a card? Do you don't need a card? Um, you know, how do you buy it? How much are you allowed to have on you? How many plants you're allowed to have? Like all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I would really, really recommend that you do some really good research um, on what the laws are, uh, where you are, so that you are staying within the guidelines of the law. Um, you know, luckily, more and more states are, are starting to, to recognize that, you know, at least in a medicinal capacity, um, cannabis really is effective. Again, um, it'll be really important to discuss with your physician. Um, do your own research. It's going to be really important that you determine what you, what you are comfortable with, um, what you are comfortable with doing. Um, maybe you're afraid of, of THC and that's okay. There's many other combinations and many other things that you can take. Maybe you're comfortable with just a little bit of THC, you know, just really do some soul searching and, and figure out, you know, what, what's going to work for you, what you're comfortable with. Um, and so that really is, is going to be, um, you know, one of my biggest takeaways is, is to do some self-reflection um, and really stand up for yourself and, and your treatment and, and what's going to work for you. So some questions that I received in pr preparing for this, can it help children at all? The answer is absolutely yes, it can. Um, not just for pain management or, or you know, the, um, myositis, but it's also uh, used a lot for uh, conditions in children such as autism, um, panic attacks. It's using my my daughter is eleven and she gets panic attacks, and so I, I would I would use it. For, she doesn't want to use it, but if she wanted to, I would allow her to. Um, it's also big with in children with seizures. Um, super effect, effective um, for seizures in children. Another question that I got was um, for me to touch on cannabis use for for RA pain, rheumatoid arthritis pain, um, and I would say it's the same as what I had talked about with the tinctures and the edibles, and particularly the topicals um, would be good for use with um, RA. And then there was the question about vaping cannabis in the lungs, um, having a lung nodule and, and history of asthma. We had touched on that. Um, my, my recommendation is, is typically not to because you just don't know what else is in there. The fungus or you know all those other preservatives in there could be truly harmful. Um, I had another question about uh, the different strains, uh, sativa versus indica, um, the flower strains. <clears throat> Um, the sativa is, is typically known to be the uplifter, and the indica strain is typically known to be the relaxer. 
However, you know, mo most recently, the, the big thing now for growers is that they're combining all kinds of strains and trying to figure out uh, the, per the perfect combination. Um, recently, they did a study where they analyzed these at the molecular level, and, and they realized that regardless of one was considered indica or sativa, there wasn't a lot of difference on the, on the molecular level, and it didn't really influence whether one was the uplifter or the relaxer. Um, the, the thing that had the most um, influence, whether, whether it was going to be uplifting or a relaxer, was the, actually the terpene profile. So as I mentioned earlier, terpenes um, have a lot of influence on the, the effects of the cannabis that you're taking and, and what's in it. How do we find a cannabis? I'm looking at the questions. How do we okay. find a cannabis nurse? Well, look at what page I'm at. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have a list here of resources. Um, you know, projectcbd.org is a really good educational resource. They also um, have some other types of resources there. Um, there's a company called Holistic Caring, and they have a lot of educational things on there. Um, you can find a cannabis nurse there. You can also find products there. There's the, the link to that. I, um, when I, when I was needing a cannabis nurse, I, I went through holistic caring and now they've just, you know, really grown. They have educational programs and a lot of things for, um, for patients and resources. So it's a really good resource to go to uh, is holistic caring. Miriam's Hope, Miriam's Hope Hemp, they provide products and education. Um, when I, so these are all companies that I, um, have research that only do medicinal uh, cannabis products. And um, what, um, like I said, ones that I've researched or had a, and had experience with. So these are all comfortable. I feel comfortable sharing their information with you. There's Miriam's Hope Hemp. I used them when I was sick. Nursegrown.com. They have products. They also have nurse consultants. Um, this, this is nurse owned, strictly medicinal. Firebird Touch Therapy, again, they have products and consults. And then um, there's CannabisNurseConsultants.org. That's the one that I had just recently started. There are coupon codes available. If you're interested, you can reach out to me for additional discounts. Um, but, you know, you can uh, take note of these. Uh, let me see. We'll be, you'll be sharing the uh, slides that we can share for. Yeah. Uh, viewers, right? So they'll have yes. the, okay. Yeah. So don't feel like you have to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or screenshot every, every right. page. <laughs> okay. Uh, some of the other uh, questions that we've received, um, Christine, uh, the first one, what type of cannabis did you use? Sure. <clears throat> so um, back in 2018, um, the, the popularity of the other types of cannabinoids weren't really a big thing. So um, what I used was I used the FICO oils and I did a CBD in the morning and a THC at night. Um, it was really important to me to have, to have both of them. Um, I had taken a, a leave of absence from work, so I wasn't too worried about the, the effects of the THC. And plus I was taking it at night when I sleep anyway. So that was my, that was my combination. I had, um, the taste quite honestly, though, it's horrible. <laughs> the taste terrible, but you know, what I did was I, I pushed the, the FICO oil onto a, a toothpick and I just let it sit under my tongue so that it wouldn't you know, go all over my mouth. But I use a CBD FICO oil in the day and THC at night. Thank you. Um, and that leads kind sure. of into um, Edward's question, and then we'll get to Rebecca's. Uh, Edward says, I have IBM and have found certain strains work better for pain and fatigue. Have you noticed a difference in strains? I use sativa in the morning and indica at night. Yeah, you know, I I personally have not, um, you know, I, I, I don't know um, what strains are, are going to work best for you, but it sounds like um, you know, you're, you're kind of doing almost the same thing where the uplifter is during the day and the, the relaxer is at night. And, and that typically is a, um, a pretty typical combination. Um, and I'm glad that you found something that, that works for you. Yes. Great. Thank you, Edward and Kim, both for the questions. 
Uh, so Rebecca, um, in her state, it's difficult to access medical marijuana, uh, need a referral from the doctors who charge cash only. So I can't utilize the expert uh, expertise of a dispensary. She was getting edibles from a friend taking before bed that helped a lot with sleep and pain, but found the next day she was very hungry, putting on weight, which was already struggling with. Is that a typical reaction and any advice about what she might do? Yeah. Here, let me just, let me read it again. I, I have sure, to read it here. I sure. want to make sure that I understand. Wondering if the edibles had a lot of THC in it that would cause someone to be really hungry. Um, I, I would say that if that is a concern is to really focus more on CBD um, because that doesn't have the, the, the appetite stimulant portion of it. So whatever, whatever products are, are mostly CBD, that, that is what I would go for if, if you're worried about being hungry and putting on weight. And the side note to that, that I didn't include, sorry, was that she has tried CBD from a respected CBD store, uh, but didn't feel that it did anything at all. So maybe just mixing a little THC. Yeah, mixing a little THC, or, you know, I'd be curious to know what the dose was, because, you know, you want to, you know, titrate or, you know, increase the dose every three to five days. So it could just be that, you know, that the dose that she was taking wasn't effective. Um, and, and there's more things that you can play around with, you know, if you want to add CBG or other things. But um, as I mentioned before, if you're going to try one thing, don't give up, um, you know, increase the dose or add more to it. And Rebecca, thanks for the question. And feel free to uh, type in if you want to, um, you know, put in how much your dosage was or any additional details and uh, we'll come, come right back to you, okay? And Linda uh, had commented that her understanding about the strains that they're made up of different percentages of cannabinoids. Is that, is that a, a good basic statement there? Um, I I think so. I, I think so. Um, and that's going to be based on the grower. Um, like I mentioned before, every, all the growers are trying to find the most, uh, you know, the best combination. Um, it's really going to be really rare to find something that's, you know, specifically or only one or the other, because a big thing now is, is combining them and finding right. a good, uh, a good combination. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And Therese uh, commented, uh, excuse me, asked, what is the best THC to CBD ratio for pain? Um, it's going to depend on the kind of pain. Um, for autoimmune diseases and inflammation, a, a four to one is, is pretty good to start off with. Um, and then if you're, you know, once you start getting used, if you're worried about the THC, once you start getting used to the THC and the four to one, you may want to increase it to a one to one, um, which would have more THC in it. Um, but again, um, those would, those are general guidelines. So a four to one is good to start with a one to one is good, but you may want to, you know, if you can play around and, and try different doses, but, but typically for, autoimmune disease and inflammation, the four to one and the one to ones are the ones that are most recommended. Thank you. Uh, and then Rebecca has uh, typed in a follow up. Um, the CBD in SunMed broad spectrum, greater than 10 milligrams per milliliter. Um, and she did try increasing it quite a bit. Okay. So some things that you could do rather than a broad spectrum would be to, to do something that's full spectrum because it has, um, it has the terpenes, it has THC and the CBD in it. You can also try different, uh, different ratios to find out what works for you if you're you know, gonna do tinctures. Like I said, trying the four to one or the one to one. Um, so there's different products and, and different combinations that, that you can try. Um, probably okay. throwing in a little bit of THC in there would be really good. And I know, uh, Rebecca, that we've had uh, this conversation with some others in our groups and stuff. Um, and, you know, just like if you get a gummy, maybe just biting a piece of it off rather than, you know, taking the whole thing um, and starting it that way yeah. was uh, has worked for some other people. So yeah, and pay attention to the dosages because yeah. edibles come in different dosages. There's, you know, five milligram, 10 milligram, you know, 20 milligrams. So, um, you know, usually a starting dose would be two to 2.5 or, or five milligrams. 
Um, and Kim is asking if you can get CBD products in your area, how do you mix the terpenes or only one terpene? Um, I would say work with someone who <clears throat> can customize. Um, if you can find a, um, a supplier that can customize it, then, then I would go with them. That's not, you just, you order it. On some of the websites, it'll like give you an option, you know, do you want to add some terpenes and you can like click the ones that you want to add. Um, but it's going to be based on the, the person that that's making it if they have the capability to, to choose the terpenes. But if you're using a, a, a full spectrum um, CBD, um, it should have the, all the terpenes in it. Great, thank you. And then we have one more question, and uh, this is a this is a doozy. I, uh, Brittany, I know that this is a this is a hard one um, you've yeah. probably experienced. But how do you get doctor approval? Yeah, that that's a good question because you might not. Um, you know, there. You know, I would recommend coming to your doctors if if the doctor isn't um, isn't hip to it. You know, you can bring some actual research. Doctors would like to look at research, and they like to look at the numbers. Um, although research hasn't been done in the United States, they've been done outside of the United States with American researchers. Um, and, you know, just, I think it's also going to depend on your relationship with your doctor. It's, it's going to depend on so many things. But if you're not, if, if, if cannabis is important to you, and, you know, whatever you're saying to your doctor is not working, then, you know, you may want to make some really big decisions, whether that's the right doctor for you. I'm not saying that's the right answer for everyone, but it's, it's going to depend on, you know, what's important, what's important for you. Um, it's going to be dependent on, on that particular doctor. But like I said, doctors like to see studies. They like to look at facts. You may want to, um, if you get a, a cannabis nurse on, on board, they can, you know, when you give, you know, you give a release of information or whatnot, um, we can um, talk to the doctor. Like a lot of these nurse consultants do offer, um, you know, calling your doctor and discussing it with them. Oh, that's a great, great benefit for those that are in this. Yeah. Yeah. My, I was in pain management for many, many years. And when those 2016 opioid guidelines came into play, um, well, first my pain management doctor was totally against cannabis the whole time. Um, but then he had to decrease my dose in half because of these guidelines. And that's when he finally relented and I was approved for the medical marijuana. So it took a, a big event. You it know? was a while, yeah. yeah. But you know, the other, the other thing is, um, like I mentioned before, doctors now are so scared to, provide, to um, prescribe opioid medication. So nowadays they may be more open to it because they're, you know, they're so scared to to provide adequate dosages of opioids. So, so they, they may be more open now. Yeah, I completely agree. It's yeah. uh, up to us to have that conversation with them and yeah. present it in the, you know, in a way that, you know, I'm interested in taking charge of my health. And this is something that I've researched and I would like to, to add to my, you know, dot, dot, dot. My so. treatment plan. Yeah. To my plan of care. Great question, Brittany. Thank you so much. Uh, we've had a couple more questions come in. If you still have a, a couple minutes, Christine. Okay. Um, let's see. I use CBD during the day and THC for sleep. Wants to put on weight, therefore looking to get the munchy effect, but so <laughs> far not getting it. Any chance, uh, anything that he can do to, or excuse me, uh, that person can do uh, to get to the increase munchies. the munchies. <laughs> yeah. Want to that's eat a fun, more. I don't know why they think that's a fun question. Um, you Is can it, increase your, you can increase your THC. That's something that you can do, but you can also, um, look at the things you're, that you actually are eating. Um, it might not necessarily be how much you're eating, but you know, you want to eat things that are like high in protein. Things are going to, that are going to make you want to to gain weight. Um, I'm not sure what the purpose is of, of wanting to put on weight. If it's something that because you don't feel like you look okay and, and that might be, you know, a whole, a whole other issue is, is to look at the reasons why you're wanting to, to put what weight on. But the important thing to focus on is, is your, your actual health and, you know, what is the current state of health um, in your body and what's going inside and not necessarily what the scale says. 
right? And I know that I've been in that position with trying to gain wow. weight. And I, I was in a huge flare and lost uh, 90 pounds. Wow. And yeah, yeah. so I, I understand the question very well. And yeah. uh, I definitely use um, my medical marijuana for appetite stimulant because otherwise yeah. I, I'm not going to eat. So that's adding yeah. some of that THC is what helps yeah. me. Adding the THC and looking at what you're eating. Yes, yes. And that's it's a big thing that we're focusing on this year. We just started a uh, myositis gets moving program on Clubhouse. So for all of you who are joining us today, uh, we talk about uh, proper and adequate protein intake. We talk about working together to get moving. Um, there's the also the idea of working together with support partners. Um, and then we meet yeah. every Tuesday to discuss all of those important things, because with myositis, we need movement. We need the protein. Um, mm -hmm. So please join us. Um, that would be a, a wonderful uh, step. So thank you for the question. Stephanie yeah. uh, says, how do I <laughs> document the cannabis on my medication lists? Oh, good question. Yeah. So I'm not sure what list, but you know, when I, when I just recently, when I saw my physician there, they, you know, they ask you what supplements and all of that stuff that you're taking. I just tell them that I'm taking um, CBD and they have it on there. I mean, nowadays there's an option that they can choose and actually CBD is on there. Um, so just let your doctor know it's going to be up to whatever program or whatever they're using. Um, but just notify your doctor and your pharmacist. Right. So if we were using uh, THC and CBD, would uh, just cannabis therapy or something like that, would that on cannabis or do we need to be more specific for I, I, our doctors to better understand? Yeah, you know what? I'm not really sure if you need to be much more specific than that. I would probably talk to the doctor and say, you know, how should I, how would you prefer that I list this? This is what I'm taking. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and Wendy, um, do these online stores ship to patients? They do. For, for CBD only though, right? Yes. Okay. So the THC part, there's there's no shipping, uh, just to, to be clear, right? Yeah. You have Correct. to get that in your state uh, because of federal laws. Correct. Mailing. Yeah. And uh, again, we'll have all of her contact information available on these slides and the uh, recording of the video will also be available in the next couple of days. So we certainly appreciate you guys joining us and being open to learning maybe something new or uh, taking a look at something that you've tried in the past and maybe had a bad experience with and maybe this will help you uh, work to dose it uh, so that you can titrate <laughs> and yeah. get a good dose. <laughs> That's the word of the day is titrate. Yes, yes. <laughs> get a, a good uh, dose for you and what you're comfortable with. So thank you all so very much, Christine. Thank, thank you. you. Oh my goodness. Thank, thank you, everyone. I appreciate all of you. And thank you for, for being here and helping me spread the word. I appreciate mm -hmm. you all. Thank you. It's our pleasure, Christine. Thank you. Wishing everyone a wonderful rest of your day and uh, reminder, uh, support session tomorrow for those with myositis on Clubhouse. Uh, so join us for our weekly Sunday support session. Hope to see Yay. you there. Thank you. Okay. Good day, everyone.